welcome. In this video we're going to solve a flow equilibrium uh, exercise on a gas lifted well using tubing tables. And we're also going to find the gas lift uh, performance curve. That means how much gas I should inject to obtain maximum oil production. So in the sketch I show here on the left is a vertical well producing from an oil reservoir and the wellhead pressure is kept constant and I'm injecting gas through the annulus and the gas lift valve is so low in the tubing that actually I can assume that it's like it's it, the gas is being injected at the bottom of the tubing. The gas and oil that come from the reservoir they have a fixed ratio that won't depend on the, the rate of oil actually it's going to be constant doesn't matter how much oil I produce and that ratio it's a GOR of the reservoir or the RP of the reservoir is going to be QG uh, gas from the reservoir divided by Q oil. So I'm doing bottom hole equilibrium. I'm using this uh, point here to do my equilibrium, which is the bottom hole. And the, then the strategy there is to make the, the available pressure curve seen from the reservoir. So here we have some place here we have the reservoir pressure. And then I want to, to see what is the pressure available here seen from the reservoir. And that's uh, the IPR. That's this curve. For that curve, we're going to use the uh, Fetkovich equation, which says that QO is equal to QO max times 1 minus PWF divided by PR um, squared. Okay, so that's the equation we're going to use for the IPR. And for the TPR, actually we're going to use uh, some curves that have been pre-computed for a constant wellhead pressure, but now for different GORs. That means that the tubing GOR will be different. When we have gas lift, that's what happens. We are actually increasing the GOR from the reservoir to something higher to achieve the lifting effect. And then I will have a series of curves for the same wellhead pressure, but I have different GOR. Okay, and that will be in a table format where it says uh, it's like a collection of points. It's like if I were storing all of these points on a table. Okay, those points are going to be are the points that are depicted below in the table. Okay, in this uh, these two tables here, but we don't have only two. We have quite a few. So then, to find out uh, the the intersection. We need to do in, to do um, uh, to, to find the, the curves at different GORs. Let's say here I have for 100, here I have, might have for 200, for 150. I have to do interpolation between these two curves. So let's go to the Excel file and see what we find there. We find an IPR section in which we have reservoir pressure 200 bar QO max. That's 3,000 standard cubic meter per day. No water is being produced from the well, and the GOR from the reservoir is 100. Okay, so let's, here you have um, the QO divided by QO max, and it goes from zero, I have no rate, that will give you reservoir pressure all the way to one, and that's going to be uh, the absolute open flow. Uh, so I'm going to calculate QO first by multiplying this fraction times uh, the oil maximum, and I block it. And that goes from zero all the way to 3000. And now I calculate the PWF for that. I'm going to use the Fetkovich equation, IPR equation. And that is uh, this function called IPR Fetkovich PWF. It requires PR, QO max, and QO. And it's the same equation I showed um, uh, that I showed before. But clearing out, um, now I have P. Uh, I have the Q and I want to calculate the PWF. Okay, so that's how I'm using this equation. Okay, so this equation requires reservoir pressure, requires, and this should be blocked, and this should, it requires a QO max that should be blocked and requires a QO. Okay, so at uh, zero, it simply gives a uh, reservoir pressure but then as I um, go to a rate, to very high rate, it gives you actually zero. You have to apply zero at the bottom hole to get 3,000 uh, zero bar. 
Now let's talk about the uh, TPR, the TPR, the tubing tables that I mentioned before, they are given here. So you see here you have a different collection of tables for a GOR of 54, and you go from the rate from 0 0.1 to 2000, a standard cubic meter per day of oil, and then that gives you the PWF. So for example, this curve is um, this curve here. Okay, and you see that's for a GOR 54, and for a wellhead pressure of 30 bar. And then this one here is going to be for a GR of 100, and it gives you again the, the uh, PWF versus the rate, and so forth. And here you have for 300, okay, we have all the way from 54 all the way to 700 GR. Okay, so I'm going to plot it first for the same reservoir GR, assuming that there is no gas lift, okay, 100. And I'm going to uh, let's use the same uh, range of QO that is in the table because I want to plot exactly at those points. You see that the table doesn't exist beyond uh, 2500. Okay, so I'm going to plot uh, paste these numbers there. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to 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 use the tables, I'm going to interpolate on the table, and it has to be a bilinear interpolation because um, I have um, the GOR that I'm specifying up there, and I have the Q. Okay, so I have to to that that will be like a bilinear interpolation to find out the value of PWF. Okay, for that I'm going to use a, a bilinear interpolator interpolator I made this function. This function requires the value of uh, the rate, that's the first parameter that is on the table, the uh, outermost column, that will change, so I keep it there. But then it requires the value of the second uh, parameter, which is a GOR, okay, I call it your RP of the tubing, and that actually is going to be constant, okay, for the whole curve. And then it requires the column at which I have my uh, parameter, my parameter is in column 1, 2, 3, so simply I type 3, the number 3. Then the next, um, the next um, input is uh, the table, so I have to provide the whole table because it's look, looking up on the table, finding the bounds and then doing the interpolation, and then I block it, that will be the same table for everything. And then it requires two numbers indicating that what is the order of, in which order are these two parameters, the independent variables. If they are, if it's one, they are ascending. If it's zero, they are descending. Okay. In this case, you see the rates are increasing with a uh, number of rows. And also here, the GR is increasing with the number of rows. So I should use one comma one. Okay, that gave 180. So, for example, let's see for a GOR, a rate of 0 0.1 and a GOR of 100, a rate of 0 0.1 and a rate of 100, that gives 180.4. Okay, so for example, now if I drag it down, that's going to be, that should be identical to the curve 180, 174. Okay, 180. All the way 179.7, which 174.3, 159. Okay, so it's, it's uh, exactly the same. Okay, so you see here you have the intersection. If you were, uh, if the well is operating without any gas lift, then it, this will be the intersection around maybe something like 800, 900. Okay, and I want to calculate for each one of these points. I want to calculate first what is the total gas that is uh, being um, produced, okay? So for this point, it's going to be this QO times the RP of the tubing, okay? That's going to be the total gas that is being produced. Okay, and it's going to change depending on the value of the oil rate that I have. So it's simply the Q oil times the, the, the tubing RP. Now, how much is coming from the reservoir? is going to be the Q oil times the RP of the reservoir, which in this case is 100. It's also, it's also 100. So in this case, both coincide. Okay. And I can calculate for each one of these points how much gas is being injected, which will be the total 
minus how much is coming from the reservoir. And in this case, it should give zero. Okay. So now you see that that is with no gas injection. I'm going to inject now a little bit such that the GOR of the tubing is going to be 150. And now you see that the intersection moved from 800 to something now close to 1000. Okay, and now I'm injecting some gas. But something interesting to see is that the amount of gas that I'm injecting for each QO is actually different. Okay, then let's see 200, we still get a positive effect of gas lift. 250, we still get a, uh, now we are starting to have some reversal. Okay, now we go to 300. Okay, now we start to still get some reversal, 400. Now it's going back very clearly, 600. Okay, and then 700 is actually going back. Okay, so that's actually the, the, the effect that gas lift has. It can have some increase in the equilibrium rate, and then at some point it starts to reverse. Okay, so what we want to find now is the exact value of the intersection. Now we have done it graphically, so now we want to find the exact value of the intersection. So let's start with um, QO uh, maybe 100, just a value that we assume. That value we're going to use a solver to calculate. The RP here will be 100. Okay, that will be initially the reservoir RP. And then we calculate the PWF using the uh, IPR Fetkovich equation. Yes. Now we're doing the same that we have done before for the IPR and TPR, but only for one point. We want because we want to find the intersection. IPR Fetkovich. Okay, and that's going to be PR PR Q max and QO that the QO that I assume here. I don't need to block because I don't need to drag that down. Okay, that gives me 197 to 100. Okay, so 100 is the radius 100. That will be very close to 200. Okay, then the PWF is going to be this table interpolation function, which I call two-dimension interpolation. It's going to use the value of oil. It's going to be the value, use the value of uh, the RP from the tubing. It's going to be in column 3, that's where I have the PWF. And then it's going to use the matrix that I have to input here. And that matrix... Uh, the matrix, and then I have to use the, the numbers, the integers, indicating if it's ascending or descending order. Okay, so it should be 0, 1, uh, 1, 1. Okay, and gives 151. Um, so these two are different. That means that this is not my equilibrium rate. Okay, so um, let's change this back to 100 so we can QC our calculations. Okay, the error is going to be this guy minus this guy. Okay, and what I do simply, I use now the goal seek. I ask Excel, please to calculate um, this cell to bring it to zero by changing this number here. Okay, and this should give around 800 and something. Okay, so that was that is that intersection here. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to calculate QR, Q gas from the reservoir. That's going to be this number times this number. Okay, that's how much gas is coming from the reservoir. Q gas total is going to be this number times how much is the RP of the tubing. In this case, these two numbers are going to be exactly identical, and the gas leaf injected is going to be the total minus the reservoir, and that essentially is going to be zero. Okay. So this will be the first point in my gas leaf performance curve. Okay, so that's how much gas I'm injecting. Okay, that will be here. Maybe to make my life easy, so I can paste it easily. I can join, going to repeat these two columns here. Q oil. And then I'm going to put the RPT here. Okay, so such that I can just copy this and paste here. Okay, so that I will make my life easy. So I will have here QO. Okay, and then RPT is going to be this guy there. And then I'm going to change the color code of all of these because they are. Okay, 
and I change not to scientific, but I keep it in uh, general. Okay, now I have these two for zero gas lift. That is how much oil I get. Let's do one more, and then I will do it offline. And then, um, yeah. so let's try with 150. Okay, now you see there is no convergence because that's not there is no um, match between the PWF from the IPR and PWF from the TPR because uh, we are you know our equilibrium rate is more to the right. So then I use again uh, the goal seek. Say I want this cell to be zero by changing the rate, and the expected effect of gas lift is that I get a higher rate. Now the rate is a thousand, so now I copy this one, and I'm now actually because the GOR is 150, is not 100, what comes from the reservoir. Now I'm injecting some gas. Okay, now I got two points, and you see that you have an increasing trend. So now I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to do it um, offline, and then I'm going to show you the result. Okay, now it's finished. And now you can see okay now you can see the result I have made the equilibrium for uh, all of these RPTs 100 150 200 250 300 400 500 and 700 and you see that actually you get a very nice uh, increasing effect of the gas lift uh, of increasing the oil rate until you reach to a RPT of 200 but then after that you start it starts to decrease Again, the area, the region here is quite flat, and then it starts to decline. Okay, until we reach to 700, which is the maximum RP we have on the table. So this, uh, the plot of uh, the Q oil that I get from the reservoir versus the Q gas injected, this is what I call the gas leaf performance curve.